You were a high school dropout. I don't need you to hand over your work to me. I'll ask the competent employees, so get the hell out of here. Lucas, the department manager, chuckled as if he were looking down on me. I didn't understand why I had to be told off so much for being a high school dropout. I felt compelled to yell at him out of irritation and fury, but I was able to restrain it. I understand. I guess he didn't expect me to agree so easily. He looked surprised for a moment. I bid him farewell and turned my back on him. If you want me to quit, I'll do that I thought about what was about to happen and muttered to myself as I left the company. The next day I was hanging out with Grace when I got a call on my phone from Lucas. You were the one who told me to disappear, I ignored it and continued to play with Grace. By the time I realized it, I had many missed calls. I couldn't leave it any longer, so I picked up the phone. Come back to the office right now. Without you, our company will go out of business, I heard the pleading voice of Lucas. My name is Henry Garcia. I'm 32 years old and have a daughter. My parents died in a car accident when I was very young, so my uncle took me in and raised me by himself. My uncle was a sickly man who didn't make much money. I'm sorry, Henry. I wish I could buy you many things. But it's okay. I don't really want anything in particular. Still, he prioritized me in everything so that I wouldn't feel lonely. As much as possible, he would serve me good meals, but he would eat something simple. He would wear ragged clothes for himself, but would furnish me with new clothes. As I grew older, my uncle was such a kind person. I'll drop out of high school and work. There isn't anything in particular that I want to become. I was always grateful to my uncle, and I chose to work after I dropped out of high school to repay him as soon as possible. I see. I won't stop you if that's what you want to do, but as a high school dropout, there are few job opportunities available. Yeah, I know, but there's someone who said he'd hire me. I got a job at a factory that made certain products. It was the only place that would hire a high school dropout, and I worked hard surrounded by adults. Fortunately, people around me were sympathetic to my situation. They gave me a lot of advice, not only about work, but also about my personal life. Henry, you can eat this. I guess I cook too much. Wow, thank you very much. Some people even offered me food and I spent my days working hard and feeling grateful to those around me. Then my uncle got sick. No matter how much money he had saved, my salary went to pay for his treatment and to support myself. I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it, I've come this far because you took me in. This is my way of repaying you. Every time I'd go to visit my uncle, he looked sorry. I had no hobbies or desires in the first place, so I didn't really care. You are a really nice boy, my uncle would smile kindly at me saying so. When I was 20 years old, his condition worsened and he passed away. I guess I'm finally alone. I was sad every day. The one who supported me was Emma, who later became my wife. Are you okay? Well, I guess not. You lost a family member who was very important to you. If you want, you can tell me about it. She reached out to me after I lost my family and supported me with all her heart. Thanks to Emma, I managed to look forward. It didn't take us long to start dating and realize we were intended to be married. Emma, will you be my family? Yes, I'd love to. We'd been dating for a few months. I proposed to her, worried that it would be too soon, but Emma accepted it with a big smile on her face. After that, we were blessed with a daughter, Grace, and I was happy. Henry, I received a call from your client. Thank you very much. I started out on the factory floor, but now I was working in the sales department. It was quite rewarding to sell a product I once made myself. Besides, I had a surprising talent for sales, many of my clients liked me, and sometimes I was able to win big contracts. I was trying my best to do what I could do and contribute to the company, but there was one person who didn't like me. Hello, Mr. High School Dropout. I want this paperwork done by today. But this is not my job. Don't argue with me when you're uneducated. Just do what I say. He was Lucas Moore, the department manager. He called me a high school dropout and said I was uneducated. He was also the type of person who forced me to do non-job related chores while also making me do his work. Henry, I'll take care of that. You have a business meeting later, right? Thank you. I appreciate it. People around me were helping me out against such a manager like Lucas. No problem. We wouldn't even have a job if it weren't for you. They all knew what I'd achieved, so they tried to protect me. However, Lucas was in the branch office until the other day, so he was unaware of my accomplishments and he judged me only on the basis of my academic record. People around me tried to explain it to Lucas, but don't talk about that high school dropout in front of me. 
As soon as my name was mentioned, he would end the conversation. Eventually, everyone gave up trying to explain to Lucas and started to support me anyway. I need to focus on my job now I had a family to protect. I needed to do my job well to support both of them. Ah, as usual, I'm exhausted. Emma called out to me with a bit of concern when I said that after returning home. Thanks for your hard work, Henry. You look like you're working hard every day. Oh yeah, I guess so, but I'm fine. I tried to be cheerful, not wanting to worry Emma, but she obviously frowned. You always try to be reserved like that. You shouldn't hide things from me. That's what she told me, so I complained to her about Lucas. When Emma heard what I had said. I've heard of him. Come to think of it, she muttered. Heard of what? What? A rumor that the head of the sales department is concerned about people's academic backgrounds and looks down on those with less education. I didn't think it was true that you were the one being looked down upon. Emma worked in the accounting department of the same company. Apparently the rumors about Lucas had spread to other departments. I couldn't help but chuckle when I learned that fact. Shall I tell the CEO? No, I don't want to bother him. But I'll see what happens and if nothing changes, I'll ask you to do it. Okay, but let me know soon. Emma said so a little angrily, and I nodded in agreement. At that moment, I felt a jolt in my knee, and when I looked down, I saw Grace with a big smile on her face. Dad, let's play. Oh, sure. Telling it to Emma made me feel a little lighter, and I picked up my daughter with a smile on my face. A few days after talking to Emma, I got a call from a big company that is notoriously difficult to get a contract with, but they wanted to do business with me. Really? Thank you very much. And not only me, but the whole department was overjoyed, and when all that was left was to get the contract signed. Good job, I'll take it from here. Excuse me. <laughs> Unbelievably, Lucas took the credit. He took the contract while I was puzzled and tried to go straight to the client. Lucas, you can't do that. That contract was only possible because of Henry. What are you talking about? It just so happened that the deal came through when he was in charge. It doesn't make any difference who goes there. Everyone around Lucas disagreed with him, but he didn't give a damn. I can't entrust such an important contract to a high school dropout. Henry, you go and clean up the warehouse he told me to complete some tasks and then departed eagerly. Henry, are you okay? While I was organizing the warehouse, Emma showed up. I didn't know why she was there. While I was puzzled, she said I heard it from your colleague and walked up to me with a smile. Hey, do you still have to wait and see what's going to happen? Emma looked straight at me. I was lost in her words. I was really shocked by what happened and I asked myself why it was happening to me. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I had a faint hope that he would recognize me someday. You are a sweet and hardworking person, so maybe you want to be recognized for your work. But I'm going to mention to the CEO what happened saying that Emma left the warehouse. Hey, Mr. High School Dropout, do you have something to do with Emma, the accountant Lucas, who had just returned from a client, asked me that irritatingly. What? She's my wife. I told him the truth in response to his question. He looked annoyed for a moment. Emma is your wife, but you were a dull high school dropout. Emma was certainly attractive, she had a youthful appearance and I heard that many men admired her. Maybe Lucas was one of them. Hey, you should introduce me to her, Lucas said so with a grin on his face. His comment caused me to make a dumb reply. Introduce me to Emma? But that's impossible. How am I going to introduce my wife to you? Ha, huh. you are just an uneducated jerk. Don't talk back to me. Lucas was glaring at me, but that was something I could never do so I firmly refused. But apparently that got on his nerves. After that, Lucas not only forced me to do his work, he even started harassing me. He broke my personal belongings on my desk and talked badly about me. Everyone believed in me and knew that the culprit was Lucas. However, it was hard to get proof, and I spent my days enduring the harassment. Come on. Hmm. The one who raised this voice first for some reason was Lucas. He glared at me and yelled at me. You won't introduce me to Emma. You won't quit even though I'm messing with you. Besides, you are acting cocky because you happen to get the contract. We don't need you. What do you mean? Seeing him ranting and raving, on the contrary, I'd become calm. Therefore, when I calmly asked him, We don't want a poorly educated person in our company. You're fired. 
That's what he said. I didn't expect him to say that so clearly and I froze. He smirked at me. You are a high school dropout. I don't need you to hand over your work to me. I'll ask the competent employees, so get the hell out of here. Lucas chuckled as if he were looking down on me. I didn't understand why I had to be told off so much for being a high school dropout. I felt compelled to yell at him out of irritation and fury, but I was able to restrain it. I understand. I guess he didn't expect me to agree so easily. He looked surprised for a moment. I bid him farewell and turned my back on him. If you want me to quit, I'll do that. I thought about what was about to happen and muttered to myself as I left the company. The next day I was hanging out with Grace when I got a call on my phone from Lucas. You were the one who told me to disappear. I ignored it and continued to play with Grace. By the time I realized it, I had many missed calls. I couldn't leave it any longer, so I picked up the phone. Then finally, what were you doing, Henry? I heard Lucas's voice. Seeing Grace startled by that, I apologized and went outside the room. You don't have to shout that loud. I can hear you. Who cares? They told me that without you, we can't sell our featured product. I guess so. I'm the one who holds the patent for that featured product. My words shut up Lucas. You've got to be kidding me, he muttered in an upset voice. When I was working at the factory, I was trying to make a better product every day through trial and error. As a result, I created a patented technology worth $15 billion. In recognition of my achievements, I was given a job as a sales representative at the head office, and because I was the one who created it, I sold it to the companies with whom we conducted business by highlighting the product's benefits and what made it distinctive and special. I was currently lending our company the right to do so. At my words, Lucas became silent again. Because I was the only one who had this technology, our company would no longer be able to use it if I were dismissed. He seemed to have understood that immediately. What after that? I want you to come back to the office right now. Without you, our company will go out of business. I heard the pleading voice of Lucas. I responded with a smile, no way. I've decided to stay with my daughter for the rest of the day with that. I hung up the phone and turned off my phone. Sorry to keep you waiting, Grace, I called out. Grace, who had been peeking around the corner, came running up to me with a big smile on her face. Oh, by the way, the sales department was in a panic. When I told Emma, who had just returned, about Lucas, she laughed and told me about it. Apparently, with me gone, the products that supported our company were no longer selling. If they didn't do something about it, they would lose tens of billions of dollars and would be on the verge of bankruptcy. My colleagues told Lucas about this and blamed him for it. However, in my opinion, they should have taken action sooner. What? And Emma didn't like the sales department's attitude in the first place. My colleagues helped me, but only because of my patented technology. If they had cared about me, they should have spoken with Lucas until he understood. After all, those people were just trying to keep themselves out of Lucas's sight. I agreed with what she said. They helped me out, but they didn't go head to head against Lucas. They did stand up for me when Lucas took credit for my work, but they were quick to back down. Even with a patent lawsuit, they only attempted to speak with Lucas in the beginning. I think they gave up on it right away. Of course, it was your fault for not telling Lucas properly about it too. It's an important matter, so you should have cooperated with others and told him properly. I'm sorry for that. Very well. Keeping quiet isn't the only way to be kind. I nodded in agreement with Emma's words. I think I've been avoiding a head-on confrontation with Lucas too. That's probably why things ended up like this. From now on, you'd better speak up. Speak up. Yeah! Before we knew it, Grace was at our feet, imitating Emma, and we both looked at each other and laughed. The next day, I arrived at the office. I didn't go to the sales department, but to Mr. Garcia's office. In other words, to the CEO's office. Oh, there you are. I summoned him, so please wait a little. Right after Mr. Garcia said that there was a knock at the door. Excuse me. Me. Lucas entered Mr. Garcia's office with a pale expression on his face, astonished to see me. Ignoring him, Mr. Garcia started the conversation. I've heard what happened. If things continue like this, our company could go bankrupt. Hearing Mr. Garcia's words, Lucas's complexion turned even paler. How are you going to take responsibility for this? Well, it's... it's Henry's fault. He deceived me. Mr. Garcia's statements panicked Lucas, and he began to blame me. As I was deeply disturbed by this accusation, Mr. Garcia sighed deeply. 
My daughter told me about you guys. What? Your daughter. Emma Garcia, the accountant, is my daughter. Yes, Emma was Mr. Garcia's only daughter, and I'm the son-in-law of the Garcia family. No way. Way. When three Garcias work at the same company, you should presume a parent-child relationship. Lucas's shoulders dropped in disappointment as he heard Mr. Garcia's comments, and he slowly began to speak up. I was jealous of his ability to work at such a young age, Lucas admitted. Apparently, he was harassing me because he was jealous of my being young and able to do a good job. But on top of that, I never quit the job, and Lucas found out that I had a young and beautiful wife, so that's why he did such a thing. He is indeed a high school dropout, but he has contributed to our company enough. Well, you are right. For this case, on my own initiative, I told him to use his paid vacation days instead of being fired Mr. Garcia explained. Yeah, the reason I was home yesterday wasn't because I got fired. Emma talked to Mr. Garcia and he let me use my paid vacation time. I will think carefully about your punishment, Mr. Garcia said to Lucas, who looked down at his words. I then went back to work after I had used up all my paid holidays. We are really sorry we didn't cover for you properly before my co-workers apologized to me as soon as I arrived at work. I was surprised at the suddenness of the situation. It seems like you are all also responsible for what happened. Emma went to the sales department and told them so I said chuckling at her typical behavior. I looked around the department. There was no sign of Lucas. Where is Lucas? He's been sent to work at the factory they informed me. Lucas was forced to take responsibility for this incident. Mr. Garcia's decision was to have him go to the factory to experience firsthand what it was like to work on the shop floor. A few days later, I decided to take a break from work and visit the factory. I'm sorry I noticed Lucas apologizing to an experienced employee. I walked up to him. Lucas. Henry, he looked uncomfortable when he saw me. I asked him if we could talk during the lunch break. Okay, he nodded reluctantly at my words. Then, during the lunch break, I'm sorry for being so rude Lucas apologized to me. He had apparently heard about me from some of the workers who had been with the factory for a long time. You really wanted to help your uncle, right? Actually, our company produces medical products. I spent my days trying to save my uncle's life. I was not a doctor, and I didn't have much knowledge because I didn't even finish high school, but I wanted to help my uncle, so I kept on making products. I was developing a device that could find even the smallest disease and remove it. In the end, I didn't make it in time. I managed to build it after my uncle passed away. I built a machine that could find pathogens with its onboard camera and remove them with the ideal movements of a doctor. If we had this machine, we might have been able to save my uncle, but we didn't make it in time. Your uncle didn't make it, but my nephew did. I stared at Lucas as he said that. Apparently, Lucas's nephew had the same disease as my uncle. I couldn't save my uncle, but thanks to a product I had developed, a new treatment was available, and Lucas's nephew survived. I wanted to work for a company that had the potential to save someone's life, even if only indirectly. It was my idea, but I had forgotten about it until now Lucas admitted. It seemed that the time Lucas spent with experienced employees had changed him completely. I can't forgive what you did. I know. Do your best to work hard here. You have to make your nephew proud of you, I encouraged him, and he nodded at my words. After that, I was to take over the department manager's position, which was vacant. How about you becoming my successor afterward, mister? Garcia asked me. No way. I'm not cut out to be CEO, I replied. My father-in-law had offered me the CEO position several times, but I'd been refusing. People would not have been concerned about the company going bankrupt if I had moved more efficiently this time. That's why I didn't consider myself the right person to be CEO. That's what I told him. I'm sorry to hear that he replied. I was satisfied with my current position, but there was a situation where I couldn't say that. You know, Henry, I think Grace will have a little brother or sister Emma announced. She became pregnant with our second child and not only me, but also Mr. Garcia was overjoyed about it. I had to work hard to support my precious family. I spent my days working harder and harder. A short time later, I went to the grave of my parents and uncle. There, I told them about what I've been doing and about our second child. I'm going to work harder to protect my family, to save people in my own way. I was going to inform them when someone called out to me, so I turned around, and there they were, my beloved family. We'll see you with that, I headed back to my family. The wind blew through the air as if to cheer me on. 